Hello everybody, um, back with another kind of how-to video. Uh, this is for all you Ecto-1 builders out there that are always looking for some of those key items to uh, set off your Ecto-1. You know, the details that are getting harder and harder to find and when you do find them, they're getting a little more and more expensive. In this video, I'm gonna show how I built my, my siren. Now, this is uh, purely just a prop, it's just purely cosmetic. Uh, you can see it, it's, it's, all, it's plastic, it's hollow, and it's built out of just uh, household items that you will literally find right over at Walmart. Now I do have uh, this back here. This is my siren. It's one of those electronic ones. Uh, that's what I use for my siren. But this is purely just for the look uh, to give it that you know detail when people walk up and check it out. It looks like it has the siren on there. Now the reason I'm going to make this video is uh, after taking it to a few shows and such like that, I've had a few people ask me about that siren, where I found it, how I got it, how much I pay for it. And then when I explain to them that it's homemade and what I made it out of, it kind of shocks them what I made it out of and how cheap it was to make it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a little step-by-step -step video of the products that I use and how I made it. And I uh, hope you enjoy this video. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, here's some of the items that, we'll, that I'll be using just to kind of show you. Uh, first off, it's just a regular everyday measuring cup. Uh, and I like to get the ones that are more like the rigid kind, you know, because I feel they're better uh, for when I go to do the body filler, sanding, smoothing, and painting it. Plus also they're a little bit stronger for like when you put the bolts and stuff like that to hold it down. So just a basic, you know, measuring cup. Then some form of cup that has a rounded bottom half to it. Uh, I just picked this up as a salsa cup. You know, uh, there's two different ways I could use this one. Uh, for the back and I'll show you what I mean by that uh, Then just a basic uh, cereal bowl just a easy, you know pliable Cereal bowl something because you have to make a couple cuts in here And then you're gonna either paint or cut out your lines for the look of the siren so that and uh, Some form of epoxy now. I normally use the other style that's made by Gorilla Glue uh, They were out. This is all they had so I'm gonna give it a shot and see if it works uh, if it doesn't work then I guess I'll be pulling it back apart and you know, get my other stuff. All right, you're just gonna need a few, just a few bolts. These are just some quarter 20s, uh, three inches long. Uh, some form of long screw for your back cap. Um, you're still gonna, you're gonna be gluing it in, but having a screw in there just also helps ensure that it doesn't move or shift, uh, especially after you do your body filler. And these right here are classified as a modified truss head screw. Um, you can pick these up. Uh, I think Home Depot carries these. Um, uh, there's also places out there like Fastenal and stuff like that, or maybe like a, a store that specializes in screws and stuff like that. Uh, you can find that here. And uh, this is a, an inch and five eighths, uh, which is this is what's going to be used to essentially hold the bowl to the base or the body of it and kind of give it that look of the bolts that hold that dress up cover on. So I got that. Uh, just a chunk of piece of wood, which obviously throughout the video, you want to, I'll show you what that is. And then some form of chrome paint. Um, I'm probably not going to use this. This is a uh, one that I picked up a while back. Uh, it works good for certain things, but I don't think it's going to work good for this. It's not what I used on my other one, so I will have to get a can of paint for that. But you will need some form of, you know, chrome style mirror paint of some kind. Uh, so, and right now, uh, as it stands outside of the paint, because uh, I'm going to pick that up, and that paint that I'm going to be using, I picked up from Hobby Lobby the first time, and it worked really well. Uh, but pretty much everything uh, you see here uh, is. About less than 20 bucks at the moment um, you know pretty pretty much everybody's I'm sure gonna have a little chunk of wood sitting around somewhere they can use you know the, the bulk of the bulk of it is like these items right here and there's less than 20 bucks here into this so I'm gonna get started and kind of show you what uh how, to, how I made mine all right the first step is gonna be uh, obviously you can see that this is definitely you know not sitting quite like you like it needs to be you want that to be obviously more level. So what I, use, what I do is I bend this right here. Now you can bend it either with um, like a, a good heat gun, um, a hair blow dryer won't do it, or some form of torch, or uh, you might even be able to hold it above your stove, like a burner, just enough to get this pliable to where this whole thing will move. Now you gotta get the whole thing to move because it, since it's a general curve, you gotta make sure the whole thing's flat. And then I'll be using this to ensure that I can that I'm making it nice and flat. And then I'll I'll cut my little piece of wood that's going to fit in there. So, but like I said, I'm going to use little 
butane self-lighting torch um, to do mine because uh, my heat gun don't work no more. So. Now you know when it's ready to move when it actually starts to move by itself. If you want to, you want to keep it moving, you really don't want to catch it on fire too much. You're going to if you're going to use a torch. But obviously you want to do the best you can to avoid that. Now when this thing starts moving by itself, like that right there, see how it's moving? That kind of lets you know it's pretty much right about there. So now I'll take it, I'll set it down, put a piece of wood on here. And you want to push flat on that and then kind of look at your cup. Make sure it's sitting, you know, level. And also make sure that the, the tail, because as you're pushing down, it will twist. And obviously you want to make sure that looks straight too. So I'm going to, unfortunately this is the boring part. You got to sit here and wait for this to, you know, cool down enough to where you can mess with it. So. I'll do, is I'll do something like that. I'll use the board first, kind of push down, make sure it's laying flat, and then just kind of kind of shove something underneath there, make sure it looks like it's sitting like it would be at a nice symmetrical, you know, wedge here. Now you just gotta now you just gotta sit and wait for a couple minutes and wait for that sucker to cool down. Now once it gets to a certain point where it's kind of holding itself but it's still hot, you can always run a little bit of water on it to cool it off or just let it do its thing. Obviously you don't want to use a water and cool it too quickly because you might you might crack the plastic. So letting it cool by itself slowly is really gonna be the best thing for it. So now we wait. Alright. I think that's cooled enough. Pull your stuff off. Now you can see at this point now it's nice and flat. It sits uh, at a nice angle. And all that so now the next part is we need to put that piece of wood here that piece of wood is just going to strengthen this to make sure that this can't you know bend break you know and like with the wind if it's on the roof of your vehicle and all that it's just going to structure you know structure the whole thing so uh so what i do is i uh got a small piece of two by here now obviously because the cup has a cone shape and this is now flat you're obviously going to have two different dimensions here so just to make things easy, I just, you know, stick it on here like that and uh, just trace it out. Now, what I do, because I want to give it a little, little more decorative thing to it, I'll just make like a little, you know, half curve here. And then we, now we just got to cut that out. Got the my wood cut. I just gotta put a little little curve on it just so it kind of dresses it up a little bit. That is where it fits in here nice and you know nice and neat. And I also kind of rounded off the edges down here so it kind of gives it like a like it's built out. And you know before I paint it and all that stuff, I'll take a little bead of caulking and just run a bead here so this way it looks like it's part part of the actual you know unit and not just like a piece of wood sitting in there. Now, next part is you gotta drill the holes. Now this this is the area you gotta take your time because the the harder plastic ones, um, if you're drilling and you drill too fast or you you know, something like that, you will crack this. And when you crack it, you know, if you can salvage it, you can salvage it. If you can't salvage it, you gotta start all over again. But the good thing is I think this was like four bucks. So it's not it's not a major loss. It's not like it was a $50 item or anything like that. So I mean if you break it, I mean you can always start over again. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off by taking my quarter inch drill bit. Actually, I'll start with a smaller bit first. So let's do the two layers. Yeah, 
I drilled. Now I'm going to switch to the larger drill bit. And this is where I'm going to sit there and I'm, I got you got to really take your time because you don't want this, you don't want the bit to grab. Once these go through here, all that, you know, depending on how thick your material is that you're bolting it to, this is going to give you your stud to anchor it down. Now this is the next part that's a li little, little fun, I guess you could say, because you need to make an indentation right here, so this way the um, when it's sitting flat, it'll sit flat. So what I do here is. Grab a pair of pliers. Uh, let me find something to kind of seal it. So I'll pull this thing up here so it doesn't tip, tip over on me. Alright, and then. this to go down to that plastic just like that and pull it back out pull it back out and use a different bolt than on the next one just because you don't want to one burn yourself two you don't want to wait forever for that sucker to cool down You want, this, you want it to get a little red. All right, here we go. Right inside there, just a little bit. There we go, pull back out. Come on, get out of there. There you go. All right, now, the reason for that is now I can take a regular bolt, Through. All right. Since I heated it up, the plastic has kind of closed my hole up a little bit. So if I take your time, like I said, don't. this part. Okay. Now, here. just take yourself a regular nut. Okay, I'm going to stick that nut inside that cavity that you made. Alright, I'm going to have to uh, do a little adjusting on that one. The plastic made a little lip there, so it's not sitting down all the way. So, tell you what, man, these things are really being a little bit of a pain for me tonight. Might have to uh, might have to heat them up and pull them into it, and then you know, just you know, since it's being a real pain, I'm gonna have to do it this way. I should have done it this way the first time, but.
But since I made it hot, I don't want to pull it all the way through, so you get you gotta make sure you don't over tighten it, obviously. So let me go ahead and do the other one now. Wow, wasn't this hard on the first one I did. carried away there. It's easy to do, it's easy to get carried away and start doing that, so I'd be careful with it. Alright, now that's in there, I'm going to pull the nuts back out. Just because the nuts are hot and I don't want them melting the rest of my plastic. Whew, they are hot. Oh, I'm not going to lie to you. They're a little on the warm side here. I went ahead and pulled the screws back out. Now they got everything, now that they're all seated in there and I cooled it down with the, the garden hose, I went ahead and pulled everything back out. The reason I did that is because it'd make it easier for this next part, which is this. Now you can do this part two ways. You can either do, put the whole thing on here. Now, if you do do that, you will have to adjust your piece a little bit, but it won't. It still won't interfere with the, uh, the two bolts that you did. Um, but doing it this way, it, it, there'll be a lot more body filler that you're gonna have to put on here to really smooth this out. So what I did is I just I just cut mine down until it pretty much fit right over this back. You know, just a pinch smaller than this outer ring, so when I did my filler, I can smooth it out better. And then what I did is I would say I sanded these little ears off. And I just put a screw through here into here. You know, like I said, you wanna pre-drill it, make sure it doesn't crack it and then obviously put that epoxy on there. The epoxy will keep it from shifting like this. The screw will keep it from potentially popping off with vibrations of the road. Uh, especially when you do your body filler, you don't want to crack your body filler. So, um, there's no real science to cutting this. It's kind of trial and error because you really can't trace it. Uh, you can try, what I, I think what I did on my last one is I think I took a, a roll of tape and I, I found a piece of tape that kind of fit on here really good. And I was able to kind of put it and, you know, dial it in. Uh, but I already looked, I don't have a roll, so I'm just going to have to kind of maybe wing it. Um, maybe, you know, something like that might be close. But it's kind of a, this part is trying to, even if you get it a little too small, it's not going to hurt anything because you, you're going to have to do some body filler uh, to smooth it out anyways. Some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of, you know, filler it can be a wood putty. Uh, it could be a body filler. I like the body filler. I, I like using what they call the Bondo glass. It kind of has a fiberglass base to it. It's a lot stronger. It's going to hold up to the vibration, especially when this thing's sitting up on the roof vibrating like this in the wind. It's going to be better. So um, I'm just going to kind of base it off. You know, when you look at your cup, hopefully, let me see if I can get a you know, good image of this. You know, you got like your lines here. You know, these. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it down inside there. I'm going to kind of correspond where these lines are and see if I can use that as a reference point. So like if I set it down inside there, it's sitting at the 200 mark. So the 200 mark is sitting at the top. So what I'm going to do is pull that back off. Go to 200 mark and estimate that it needs to be cut right about there. Because what I'm doing is I'm putting it on the 200 mark because the 200 was even with the top of this. And I'm taking my mark on a figure right here and then just kind of making a line. So now after I make that, uh, let's see. Would that be, that won't be tall enough. Uh, see if I can find something tall enough. And what I do is I'll just go like that, strike my line, and then I can cut it. See what I can find that. Let's see. Well, this has a weird taper to it. So would that taper make it work? Let's see. Uh, Close, sir. All right, let's try that. Come on. All 
Alright, now what I'm going to do here is I want to make sure that it's as close as possible. So let me go back to my 200 reference point and kind of uh, look at my line. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. I mean, I'm going to cut it a little big anyway, a little bit longer. I'm going to go a little bit above my line and then I can always sand it down until it fits just the way I want it to. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Now you can cut this a couple different ways. You can use uh, possibly uh, a table saw if you want to brave holding it. Uh, you can probably use a small, like a little small, you know, scroll saw, something like that. Uh, I'm going to use that angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and I'm just going to go around it and just cut it. I feel like I have more control over that because there's no, since there's no teeth on it, it's not going to grab anything and want to rip it out of my hands. It's just going to melt it a little bit. So I'm going to go that route because I feel I have more control and I feel safer. Uh, before I cut that though, I'm going to take my that same wheel that I used to grind this. I want to grind these off flat so they're smooth. And then that because right now I have more control where I can hold it and do that. And then I'll cut that part. So I went ahead and you know, cut it in half. Don't need that piece no more. Now, I have to find my razor, my razor blade to sit there and take all this excess, you know, melt the plastic off. But not a big deal. But at this point, then you want to check and see how how well it fits on this. See, like I said, I oversized it. So now it's it's a little too big. So now I can take and do so I'm doing the feathering out the inside to kind of thin it out a little bit so it'll sit over a little bit better so I need to go a little more I'm probably going to have to go almost to the bottom of my line here That, that fits a lot better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to screw it on, put the epoxy on there, and then I'm going to have to let things sit and dry. And then once it's dry, I'll come back with a, a sander. Not not this kind of sander, because you see where it's melted, but just a regular sander. And I'm going to go around and take off that edge, smooth all this out. And then after, after I get done with that, then really the next step would be to do the body filler and then the uh, bowl portion. I might go ahead and do the bowl first, before I get to that point, but I'd rather wait so this way I can set it up properly and make sure I get my proper spacing. So I'll probably just do all this, get it glued, and then um, have to come back to it. Uh 
all I'm doing here is just taking off all the excess plastic. You know, nothing. Apologize for that noise if it bothers people. is going to be drill a hole you know through here and into here make sure that my screw can go in without actually cracking my plastic then I'll mix up the epoxy glue it on put the screw in and then then we wait again now so you want to make sure this is as centered and as straight as possible on here so it looks looks right looks like it was meant to be there what I do is I drilled the hole and what I like to do is I like to try to make sure that I can drive my screw in nice and gently before I actually run it in So I said you, you just you don't want to crack this. Take your time. Make sure it's gonna work. You want that to sit flat because obviously when you do your filler, I mean you're gonna go over top of it, but you just don't want that to pop back out. So alright now if you've never used this kind of stuff before, it's a two-part epoxy. You know, once you pull this thing off, you literally just squeeze it, it'll push two parts out, you mix it really, really good. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna smear it on this inside edge here, you know, you know, nice and generous, and then uh, I'm going to put it on and put the screw into it. But one thing I want to do first, because I want to make sure that I don't get a bunch of excess on the uh, unit that I got to sit there and clean off. Okay. You're supposed to be able to put an equal amount on your thing. Now this says it has a one minute epoxy. Yeah, <laughs> I doubt it. But let's put it on. Really good. Really stir it up. the stuff oozes out. Screw in. Now 
now you're not, you know, tightening the screw, you know, like to the point that you can't do anything. You just want to make it snug. Clean off some of this excess. Uh, they might have been right about that one minute. That didn't give me a whole lot of work time. It's a little crooked too. I'll have to sand that out. I can sand that out, you know, but apparently they were right about the one minute. Okay then. But, I mean, I'm still going to give it, you know, at least a good 30 minutes to probably set up fully before I touch it anymore. Uh, just to make sure, but yeah, that that stuff dried pretty darn quick. Now the question is, how strong is it really? All right, it's the next day. Uh, let's see how well that stuff held. Peel the stuff off. do my sanding on it real fast so I can sand it all smooth uh, if it holds up it'll stay on so uh, let me get my sander out okay uh, when you're sanding this part uh, you don't want to use uh, the sander that I was already using like for cutting this because you can see you see it kind of melts it you know and then you gotta get all that excess off you know uh, so you really don't want to use that style of sander you just want to use the regular you know orbital style sander, palm sander, or you know something of that nature. Uh, so this way you can kind of take some of that extra texture off and then sand this down. And um, so I'm gonna start sanding on it and uh, see what happens. I'm just finishing up the last little bit with um, some hand sandpaper just to kind of smooth it out that last bit, little bit. The reason I put the the tape and the wood back on here is because at one point I was put I was going to, I was you know when I'm down the top going like this I wanted to make sure that I, I didn't break that by pushing down on it so I just put that back in there temporarily while I was doing that uh, it's obviously going to come back out but and anywhere you got to do your filler you got to make sure it's roughed up so the whole area right here I'm gonna have a little bit of filler that floats down. That's why I'm roughing that up, so I want to make sure it bonds really good. So at this point, you can, you can you start to see the, um, the overall design when you're capped, and then obviously, you know, once at the point, you know, this will be on here like this, and that's gonna be your cover. So you can see, it, you know, it's already starting to take shape. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, I usually like to do the filler at the end. I, I wanna do this part next. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Put the bolt, I'm gonna put the wood back in and put the bolts back into it. Uh, make it to where I can kind of bolt it down to something so I ain't gotta got worry about moving. And then I'll start, you know, drilling my holes, get this on here, doing, you know, trimming this out. Trimming this out to fit around this part right here. So let me go ahead and get that mounted and then uh, we'll go to the next part. All right, next step is gonna be, I need to be able to do the four screws. But obviously I want them evenly spaced. So I'm just gonna draw on my thing here, but you're gonna wanna use a speed square. So you can essentially make sure that you know you make a full 90 out of this. Set your uh, hole on here. Make sure you look like you're about as centered as possible on it. Even as possibly can. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, so now that, that pretty much gave me my 
replacement of all my screws. And I just gotta make it work. Now I made myself a little uh, stand to hold it. You know, just a couple pieces of one by, put a screw in it. So now I can work on it. And now I'm just gonna, I gotta cut out right here. I can make me a notch. So to go around here. So I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna hold it right here, figure out how big the notch needs to be. I'll cut a little off at a time until I'm happy with how far back I want to sit. And I want it to sit back to where you don't see this little part of the pour spout. Because even if I were to cut that off, just get rid of it, you're still gonna see the notch. So I wanna make sure it goes back far enough for that. So I can use, can't figure out how far back it is. Uh, it's roughly about three quarters of an inch. About where I wanna put, put that, probably down here, about three quarters of an inch. Right there. Um, roughly about inch and three quarters wide. Inch and three quarters and a half should be about five. Uh, five eighths. Seven, seven eighths, I mean. Somewhere in there. And there. So this right here should be my notch. All right, so I'm not gonna cut the whole thing in one shot. I'll take a little off at a time until it fits the way I want it to fit. stop automatically we want to stop and then just matter just drilling the rest of the holes find a small drill bit There's no easy way to do this part. There really isn't. Because what you really want to do is you want to try to make sure that you have the same distance all the way around. It's mostly kind of by eye, really. I'm gonna pre-drill these. So I don't have to fight these. Again, holding myself right at the edge of that, uh, not the not the, the poor spell, looking down, make sure it looks all even. A couple of dimple. And I got like before. You want to make sure. Sorry if I shake the camera. You want to take your time running these through here. You don't want to crack that plastic. Just, you know, run it through slowly. It'll make the threads. It'll go on. Once it makes, once it gets past the first couple threads, then you're pretty much good to go. Now you just do one screw first. I'll run. I'll put the screw in the bowl. Then I'll drill my other one. So this way I don't have to worry about my holes getting off because I drilled them all at one time. All of these out just a little bit because you don't want the screw holding this. It's gonna it's gonna hold it for
sorry, I know this part's a little boring watching somebody run a screw in with an old-fashioned hand screwdriver. And the reason why I'm going to completely put this on real fast is because to make the lines and all that for the next part, you want to make sure that it's vertically, you know, vertically straight up to the way it's going to be when it's mounted on your rig. All right, so this, that concludes the boring part of it. So now you can, you can see it's starting to take shape now you got you know your your cover that's going to have your all your little lines that are going to go on here you got your body you got a, a nice little curve in here you got a nice little mounting point you know some studs that can go through your um whatever you're going to mount it off it's going to be a flat plate or something like that if these aren't long enough you can always take and get yourself a piece of uh like just all thread sit and just put a nut on there as you as you put it in just put a nut up inside there so you can snug it down and that'll give you a longer thread just in case if you're going through uh, your full piece of uh, one in, one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half tubing, whatever it is you use for your uh, rack. If you use a, you know, like an aluminum square stock or something. If you need a little more, you can always just put a longer piece of all thread in there and do the same thing. I just use these for this, uh, for the demonstration, just, just so, you know, how, you know, putting the nuts in here so they kind of become part of the unit and your, your, essentially your mounting portion of it. So the next part is to, you really got to decide here, do you want to paint the lines on or do you want to cut them out? Uh, on mine, I, re I cut them out because when I was doing the whole siren thing, I put an actual speaker in there thinking I could make it sound good, but it didn't. That's why I put the that actual speaker behind it. Um, but you can paint it. If you paint it, your best bet is just to paint everything the chrome color first and then come back with masking tape and tape it all up. I'm going to cut them out because I think it actually looks a little bit better, especially if you catch it a side profile. You can tell that it's cut out. It makes it look a little bit more uh, almost believable, I guess you can say. So I'm going to start marking this out uh, to the way it needs to look, and then we will cut that out, and then we'll be on to the next portion, which is a little bit of filler, sanding, smoothing out, and getting it ready for paint. I just want to kind of show kind of what I'm doing here. Now, the best thing you do is... Um, Kind of go online and figure out exactly what the pattern was to look like. Uh, here's a couple reference uh, photos. Uh, as you can see in the photos, um, actually in the in the first movie, uh, the um, the horizontal lines were on the bottom. On the second movie, the horizontal lines were actually on the top, so the cover got flipped, I guess, at some point between the two movies. But it really doesn't make a difference. I mean, it's more or less a kind of a uh, personal preference. Uh, but I just, what I did is I just put masking tape on there. Um, my little cutoff wheel here actually was a pretty good size for me to use to make my main circle. Uh, then what I'm using, I'm just using a uh, drill bit like this. Uh, you know, so it's stuff out of the way. I just pretty much started off by figuring out my center line, by you know using something like this, made my center line, and I just used the drill bit, and you know just you know made my lines and just moved it up. After I got past the two, now the ones that are painted dark are the ones that will be cut out. The ones that are not painted, that'll be the uh, the extrusion or what's supposed to look like the metal in between them. Uh, so now I just got to do the other side here. Uh, I just kind of kind of show you what I was doing to essentially create all this. So I'm just pretty much going to take these. Now I'm probably going to start up here so I can try to keep these lines because obviously you want these lines to line up. So I'm going to go down this way. But when I started it, I started it down here so I can get this corner one more like what it uh, looks like. So and I just went like this. So now I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go so this way I can try to make sure that they all line up like they're supposed to. All right, I'm at the point where I'm getting ready to cut it out. Now this part really is where you really got to find your innermost patience because you can see, you know, I tra I traced it, traced it, and just wasn't lining up. So, yeah, I, I take a razor blade, cut that part off with another piece of masking tape, and do it again, do it again until I got them to where 
they're as close to being as symmetrical as they possibly can be. So you really gotta find your inner patience and really work with that. But pretty much all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a drill bit. I'm gonna run a drill bit and each end of it. Now you can cut this out a couple ways, being that this is just a bowl. You could either use a pair of snips like I used here, like get it inside there and snip it out. You could probably use a razor blade, you know, get a, like a razor blade and get it in there and just, you know, score it after you drill your holes. Me, what I'm gonna use is I have a, you know, just a little Dremel with one of those little side cut style bits on it. I'm just gonna use that and I'm just gonna, once I drill my holes, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna go right around my lines and go right around. I'll get all those cut out. Now we're at this point right here. We got our cover made. So that, that'll go on here. Now once this is all painted, you know, and it's all blacked out back there, you know, you're not gonna see through there. So you can start seeing where it's starting to take shape. Now on to doing like the uh, body filler. All right, for any of you that maybe have never dealt with body fillers before, I just get this stuff right here, Bondo glass. It's a resin base um, filler. Uh, you're gonna have like your main product and then you're gonna have a hardener. Always shake your hardener up a little bit. You know, make sure, uh, cause it'll kind of get all kind of liquidy in there a little bit, kind of like uh, paint. You know, after a while you gotta restir it. It's always good to mix it up. Now there's a ratio to it that you're supposed to do as far as how much you hear to how much hardener, but you know, I just put a little dab right there, it'll be fine. It's gonna harden no matter what, so uh, just obviously, depending on the temperature outside and depends on how much hardener you put into it, depends on how fast it's gonna, you know, harden up for you, for your work time, so. Just. Uh, after the first coat of, the, of this particular filler, and say you have any imperfections after that you wanna address, you can always get just like a, a spot putty or something like that for it. It's just what's good about this is this won't uh, bubble up or anything like that with water because it's uh, it's kind of meant for like marine use and things like that. So it'll it'll make sure uh, to you know work out really good as far as keeping everything from bubbling up on you down the road if say it gets really wet or anything. Now we see the the smoother you put it on right from the get go, the better the easier it's gonna be for you to sand it and make it look good. So, you know, take your time, spread it out, you know, don't get it all clumpy and nasty looking. You know, because you're just gonna make more work for yourself. Okay, so it's all uh it's all dry now. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh start sanding it, smoothing it out, and then um once I get that, then we can start on, you know, like I said, put maybe a bead of caulk here um, and get ready to uh, put it all together and paint it. All right, I'm at this point. Uh, I went ahead and did the, uh, you know, like I said, the uh, Bondo glass style first. And then after that, uh, it was still kind of rough. So I don't want to keep using that because it's a lot harder to sand. So then I jumped to this stuff right here. I got you know the same, I get the stuff all at O'Reilly's. That that stuff uh, spreads and stands really easy. And then for all these little dark spots you see, those are like little pinholes. So I use this right here. It's just a glazing spot putty. You just literally just get it on your finger and you go over your holes. It sands really easy. It's really nice stuff to work with. So now I'm at this point. Now you can see the whole thing kind of got hazed and sanded over. The reason why is because when I was sanding, I was using you know an 80 grit. When I was going down here, well I got too high up. And obviously, if this is not as smooth as possible, when you go to do your chrome spray paint, or your, or if you get like a mirror kind of paint or something like that, it won't look as nice because this is, this is too roughed up. So I've, I've sanded this all the way down to a thousand grit to try to get as much out as possible. 
I'm going to paint it all black. The black is going to help me see any of the imperfections. And I'll probably wet sand that black with probably maybe like a 1500 grit to make sure that it's as, it's as smooth as I possibly can get it. And then I'll go ahead and do the uh, chrome paint and then we will see what it looks like. Alright, so they're all painted. I'm gonna let this uh, dry for a while. And then, like I said, I'm gonna give it a, uh, you know, I'm gonna use a nice 1500 wet, wet dry sandpaper. I'm gonna wet sand them out with the, uh, some soapy water. Make sure that they look nice and smooth. And then I'll do the other uh, chrome paint on them. And at that point, it will be completed and ready for installation. Alright, I've gotten started painting. I went ahead and did the cover first. And I've uh, done a little wet sanding on this, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, lay a little bit of paint on that. And all I'm using is, I uh, picked this up from um, Hobby Lobby. It's not the same paint I used uh, the last time. I used a different kind, but they were out. So, But I have used this before on other projects, and it's not too bad. The other stuff was a little bit better, but uh, I mean, it's still going to work out. Okay, now I just gotta let it dry. Here we go, all dry, ready to uh, put the cover on and uh, see the finished product. And since I've already made my holes, I should be able to get away with you know, using a little extra assistance here. All right, this is the finished product. It's all painted, covers on, got the studs in there. It's ready to be mounted up on the roof. You know, if you want to get really creative and you have one of those electronic uh, sirens that you could buy, you could always put the speaker in there to make it even more, you know, authentic, you know. Uh, but I just want to add that, depending on how much material that you already currently have on hand, of uh, a lot of the stuff that you saw me use in the video, will determine the final price of the project. Now, since I had to pick up these three items and these three that were used to make it, I got about $25 into it. But now, if you had to buy everything, that's all the fillers, all the sandpapers, all the paints, everything, uh, you could probably get upwards of a, probably about 40, 50 bucks to build something like this. But being that these things are getting harder and harder to find, they're getting harder and harder to locate, more and more expensive when you do find them. And as long as you're okay with, say, you know, something like this being on your rig, uh, it's not really that bad of a price to build a very authentic looking piece uh, for your project, whether it's a Ghostbusters car, Back to the Future car. Hell, it doesn't have to be a car at all. It could just be a unique project that you're working on and you want it to have like a specific look. Uh, so the premise behind this video was to essentially, you know, get your mind working, you know, get those juices flowing and say, you know, I can go to Walmart, I can go to Home Depot, I can go to a dollar store and look at these certain items and say, you know, I know I need something that's a cylinder shape and I know I need something that has a bowl or cup kind of shape to it and start tinkering and playing with it and you know, figure out how to manipulate these pieces to create these kind of parts. So that was the whole premise really behind this video, just to show what you can really create with just some basic household items that you would never even think that would all go together to create such an item. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, drop me a comment. I would love to hear from you guys whether this video inspired you to go out and think of what you can make with just basic stuff uh, or if you plan on building one of these for your car and you're just going to essentially use this as a essentially almost like a template of a way to create your your own version of it or if you're actually going to build one that's actually just like the one i built here 
So I would love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear you, love to read your comments. And I want to say, I really appreciate you guys sticking it out with me. I know this was a very long video, very long video. And once again, I want to thank everybody for uh, watching my video and thanks for watching.